I slept fine last night. Didn't sleep too well the night before, though. It was my own fault, really. I did tell him he was welcome in if he pleased. My dream began like one of those horror games you might see, like Silent Hill or Alone in the Dark. It was night out and out almost pitch black. I was holed up in some building, hiding from something, or waiting. I couldn't really tell. I peeked out. The door was glass and had some rule stickers on it. I suppose I was in a corner store. Upon looking out, I see a deserted street lit by a few dim street lamps. The street was dead empty, dead silent. I seemed to be in the middle of a city, yet there was nothing. I tentatively opened the door, creeping out into the cold night. Ever have one of those dreams where you can feel what's happening? This was one of those dreams. I turned left out the door and began walking. The street was sloped and I was going down. Suddenly, I stopped in front of a building. Looking to my left at it, it seemed like a small house. Not one like you'd see in the city. It was shambles, a light gray-blue color. I felt the need to go in to see the inside. I crept up to the door and turned the handle. Opening the door, I looked in. There wasn't much but a few boxes, a table, and a bed. I moved silently towards the bed. On it slept a person. I glared down at her for a few moments. Her sleeping figure taunted me. I bent down, picked up an object, and swung. The brick ensured that she would not wake up soon. Dropping the bloody, hair-matted brick, a message flashed through my mind, clear as day, a dark, deep, raspy voice speaking through my mind. This anew will sew together the darkness and damnation. I only know of one kind of sinew. It's the stuff inside of you, connected to your muscles and bones, that let you move the way you do. Looking over to the table, I saw in the moonlight a glint, a glint off of something. I walked over and there sat a knife. Placed perfectly in the center, the blade facing away from me. He knew I was coming. He knew he could tell me to do this. He knew I would oblige. I picked up the knife and walked back over to the unconscious form in the bed before me. Her blonde hair was spilled out around her. Her head was bleeding profusely. I feel now as though I recognize her, but I can't be sure. I tore the sheet off of her and brought the knife down to her, stripping her flesh from bone until the muscles were all visible. I began grabbing at the sinew, slicing at it, and piled it all up. Once I gathered all I could, I began wrapping it around itself. It formed a blindfold. I put it on and all was black until the darkness was filled with an image. A house far off, silhouetted against the night sky. Atop it was a figure and a dog. The dog howled and the figure turned towards me. His tattered cowl flapped in a soundless wind. His blazing eyes bore into me, the blood-red beads that were his pupils boring into my soul. He grinned at me, knowing he'd just gotten one step closer to corruption. I began calling him. Like in many dreams, there was things I could not control. My voice was strained, and even though I shouted as loud as I could, the sound traveled mere feet. I woke up soon after that, feeling as though I had not slept at all. And I knew I hadn't. That wasn't sleep. He'd brought me into his world he'd done so many times before. And he'd watch what I did as I was placed in a deserted carnival, in a school of ravenous creatures waiting to devour me and my closest friend. He's there sometimes, my friend, but I think I know why. I think he's sick too. I looked around and knew where I'd been. I knew what I'd seen. 
the sinew will sew together in darkness and damnation. And it had. He'd shown himself to me. He was no longer what he'd been, a shapeless shadow, a shadow with no eyes, one with a call and a demon grin, one whose eyes glowed hot with flames, one who spoke to me and caressed my face with clawed shadow hands. No, he had a shape now. He's real. He's come so far, there's no way to get rid of him now. He needs a vessel, and he's chosen me. Besides, everyone is a little sick, even if they don't want to believe it. This is my last will. I'm recording this now. I don't have much time left. Well, not so much of a will, really. Everyone I know is dead, either dead or missing. I don't know how it went so wrong. It was supposed to be something that would grant me eternal wealth, riches, and longevity. Something that I heard was supposed to be how Caesar rode to power. Me being the idealistic man that I am, I decided to try it. The information was scattered far and wide, on top of Mount Everest, inside the 5,000 paving stone on the Great Wall, everywhere imaginable. Everything fit together precisely and beautifully. This is how it works. Go into the slums of your city and wait for midnight to strike. You must bring along three items, a coin that was made on the year of your birth, an object that holds music like a CD, a tape, or an MP3 player, and the left eye from a two-week-old puppy. Stand on any street and wait exactly five minutes. If you did it correctly, there will be the sound of a single footfall behind you. You must then place the items on the ground, say your name aloud, and then walk straight ahead for five minutes. Not sure what you do if there's a wall or a bend in front of you? Follow the curve of the road or go around the obstacle, maybe? Anyway, there's no time to muse over the small details. If you follow these steps to the exact letter, you'll get great power and life and all that in a couple days. After that, you're set for the rest of your life. If you didn't, well, that's where I am now. Wait. Did you hear that? A sort of squishing sound? Like wet, I, I don't know. The mic on here probably isn't powerful enough to pick up those sounds. After I didn't get my wealth and power, I did some research on this particular ritual. It's not some crappy internet meme like Candlejack or the strange creepy pastas on old rituals. It's powerful stuff. Old black magic, old as in really old. If what I've read is correct, this stuff was considered old when Rome was the only world superpower. Some of the reports have crude drawings of the things that appear behind you. H.P. Lovecraft has nothing on these images. I've also read reports on what happens to those like me, the ones who fuck up. Man, these are the worst nightmare fuel. Reports of people being found torn in half, their internal organs sucked out of their eye sockets, and the reports of the people who are found alive, their seemingly insane babblings and yells of unspeakable things. Of course, they speak to them, rendering the whole unspeakable aspect a moot point. I don't want all those to happen to me. That's why I brought an old-style revolver with me. It's loaded with silver bullets coated with salt. The way I make it, if five bullets don't kill whatever it is, the last one will go into my brain. Anyway, where, where was I? Oh yeah, I guess I didn't follow everything to the letter because I didn't get any power. After the research left me a quivering heap in my apartment, I began to slowly accept my fate. All my affairs are in order. All my family. Shit, man, strangely, 
All of them died a few days ago. I mean, I was on the phone with my dad just talking about life and where I was going when he screamed and gurgled. It sounded wet, really wet. I kept listening, trying to hear the killer. Five minutes later, I got nothing. When I went over to his place to see for myself, police were all over the place, questioned me for a bit and then got me to ID the body, or at least what was left of it. Christ, my old man didn't deserve to die that way. All this death for a stupid wish. All my friends, dead or dying, missing. I just came from the hospital, pulled the plug on my ex, literally. She was pretty torn up. Again, literally. I'm preparing myself now. I'm going to place this recorder inside this dumpster and leave the lid propped up. Hopefully, whatever it is will make some sort of noise. Anyway, I won't say my name here. You'd probably Google it to the highest heavens anyway. Okay, goodbye to everyone who is listening. Save yourself. A few days later, someone had found a tape in an empty street. The only sign of the individual was a rather large puddle of blood near the far wall. Further investigation found said revolver unfired. The last five minutes of the tape are transcribed below. JD, all right, you son of a bitch, I'm here. I did everything and you didn't deliver. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell are you anyway? JD again. What? That doesn't make a lick of sense. You can't be serious. Step out of the shadows. I want to see who I'm dealing with. A single footfall is heard. JD again. Oh Christ. Then there was silence. Then a scream that trails off into wet gurgling. Crunching sounds heard for the remainder of the tape. Forensics have found tracks leading away from the pool of blood. The tracks do not match any known human or animal on record. If you like what you heard, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you'd like to, you can follow me at Twitter. The handle is at Fuzzy Pantaloons. And I'll see you all next time.